journey and travel partners and just you know take this opportunity to to reach out to people you sometimes don't get to see that often it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for everyone and i want to thank you all for being here but let's be honest the real reason you're here is probably for our next speaker you know in all the years that a lot of us have been, uh, been involved in tourism we've always talked about having that governor who is a tourism governor the one who says we're going to take this tourism on a rocket ship ride right well we have that tourism governor he has put it absolutely put his money put the money where his mouth is because he has spent so much time effort and championing of all the dollars that you're seeing in marketing we have a great leader with chelsea ruby but it's because of this governor working with us that makes it so incredible we have our champion our tourism governor and with him today might be a little furry friend that we like to call baby dog. So with that, I would like to introduce and proud to introduce our tourism governor, Governor Jim Justice and baby dog. Terrible pandemic, like we have many, many, many other things. 
but I'd be cautious. And I would tell you over and over with, that I respect any of your wishes and freedoms with all in me, but I would tell you your best choice is to be vaccinated. I didn't come here to tell you that today. I came here to brag on you. So let me go back to that. And let me just read just a couple of accomplishments here, because I don't want to miss these. I don't ever read. But I just think about this. And there's all kinds of folks here, you know, at your Hospitality and Travel Association. But I just think about this. It says our state had seen four straight years of decline in the travel spending. It says then all of a sudden we began to experience incredible growth. West Virginia was recently named the top 10 travel region in the world. Gosh, can you imagine? Now really, can you really imagine? Can you imagine all the bad jokes that were told about West Virginia? Can you imagine absolutely that people on the outside often thought that we were just backward or poor or dingy or whatever it may be? And we knew how good we were. But the outside world had to really, really know. That's why I said you had to believe. We had to believe in ourselves. We had to put real life money into tourism and become frogs that were proud of their own pond first. Now with all of that, just imagine. West Virginia was recently named the top 10 travel region in the world to visit by Lonely Planet. We were also selected as one of the best places to go by Condé Nast, named as one of CBS's top destinations for family vacations in 2022. Our national park now is, na is, is often mentioned over and over and over as the best on the East Coast, and we haven't even started. It's unbelievable. And in West Virginia slang, I would say, who would have thunk it? But you believed, and I sure believed. Chelsea Ruby believed, and on and on and on and on. And lo and behold, here we are today in a celebration, a room, jam-packed, I hope a bunch of you go to the casino <laughs> and lose. <laughs> He's the always tell you that. But, uh, but I, I could not possibly do anything more than just tell you just this. Let's think now, not about where we've come from, but let's think where we're going. Now, let's be really fair. I've told you the truth all the time. I'll make mistakes, but I'll always tell you the truth. Now, politicians don't do that much because politicians say, oh, that's not a lie, it's just political. You know, well, that's garbage to me. And that's why I challenge the media all the time. You find something that I've told you that I knowingly know is not the truth. They can't do it because I'm not going to do that. I mean, my great goodness alive, you think of what they say about other politicians, and they say thousands and thousands of lies. Well, we really need to clean that up too, but we can't do that at this moment right here. Now, but let's think about this. Here's what Jim Justice says to you today. Jim Justice says just this that while the successes are unflat believable, they're unbelievable, you have just touched the parsley around the edges of the plate. Really and truly, there's so much more good that can come, it is totally off the chart. You haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes, and baby dog nor I would touch the parsley a lot. <coughs> right, baby? So with all that being said, well, what's to come? 
and what's going to change and what's going to drive the boat. Well, first of all, what's going to drive the boat is the outside world believes now, believes that this is the diamond in the rough that they may have missed, the place that they could really, truly hunger for. So you've got to jump, a big, big, big jump. And now, as we continue to move forward with our government, you know, and our, and our state pumping out these ungodly surpluses, Again, I know, I'm a business guy, and I know what it was. You know, my dad would always say just this. He would say, if I know and God knows above, that's all I need to know. I don't care what the rest of them think. And really and truly, in this situation, I know and God knows above that our state was bankrupt. Bankrupt. We didn't have anywhere to turn at all. Nobody had anywhere to turn. Literally, we had already drained our rainy day fund down to a level where we couldn't take it any lower because our bonds were being derated. And before you know it, more and more and more and more people left. And as more and more people left, we just drug the hole right with us. And today it's a different animal. Today it's cooking. And not only cooking, it is on fire cooking. With all that being said, now we're talking about things like significant tax cuts to people and putting money back in the system. We're right on the cusp, right now. We're right there. And God knows we've had meeting after meeting and compromise after compromise. And thank goodness, you know, the Senate and the House and, I, and us and the governor's office are all pulling the rope together at this point in time. Now, with all that being said, what happens, imagine this, what happens if we pass what is right at our doorstep right now? Well, we put 750 some odd million dollars back in the pockets of our people. When we do that, what happens to your industry? For crying out loud, all of us know the multiplier effect on those dollars can be 10 times. Well, if that's 10 times, that's seven and a half billion dollars. Well, seven and a half billion dollars in the hands of all kinds of people rolling around there and everything else in West Virginia, just think about it, just think about it. Think about the opportunities. West Virginia's entire budget is 4.7 to 4.9 billion dollars. If we put a multiplier effect of 7.5 billion dollars annually back in the hands of the people, think what can happen. Absolutely with all that, then you know what will happen? Over and over and over, more people will come. More people will want to live here. More and more activity that will bring more goodness to your industry like you can't imagine. As our national park becomes developed and everything, think of the limitless possibilities there. There's so many things. There's so many things. But at the end of the day, and I'll end by just saying this, and I want you to understand, you're the ones that made us proud. You're the ones that pulled the rest. You did. You're the ones that absolutely made us the most proud of all. An industry, absolutely, that we had just shoved to the sidelines in many ways. The very industry that should explode beyond belief in West Virginia. And what have we been waiting on? My God, living, what have we been waiting on? Four of the most beautiful seasons on the planet located within a rock throw and two-thirds of the population of the country, and all the goodness that you have to offer, all the craftsmen, and on and on and on and on and on, what were we waiting on? What have we been waiting on for decades? And now here it is. And you're just barely on the springboard. Honestly, it could be really something else. 
I know you'll lead us. You already have. I know you'll make me proud for, I hope, decades to come. And Baby Dog and I, no matter what we do, no matter where we go, we're kind of short-lived in the governorship and everything. I've got to tell you this real quick. Can I tell you this one story real quick? I got a letter the other day from a kid that I coached in basketball 25 years ago. Actually, 30 years ago. And that kid, when, you know, a lady from my office brought it to me, and said, you may want to read this. You know, we get all kinds of letters. And I thought, well, this is probably somebody complaining about their commode or something like that. You know, and so, so anyway, but I grabbed it, and I looked, and right on the cover of it had Matt Fitzwater. Well, probably hardly anybody here knows Matt Fitzwater, but I surely knew Matt Fitzwater. And so I started to read it. It said, I was on a run with my two children, my two boys, He's now 42 years old. He said, I was on a run with my two boys. And he said, they said, Dad, we're tired. Can we just walk from here? And I looked at him and I said, y'all just keep sawing wood. And so we kept running. And when we finished the run, they asked me what that meant. And I said, what that means is to persevere with adversity and try to continue to make steady progress. And then he said, I remembered the first time I ever heard you use that phrase. He said, we were at the National AAU Tournament in the Sweet 16 game, and, and, and we had played very poorly in the first half, and it was the first and only time I saw you truly disappointed in our effort. He said, you told us we could come back if you just keep sawing wood. And at the end of the day, he said, you know the results. We came back, we won the game, and advanced to the quarterfinals of the National AAU Tournament. You probably have no clue, for many of you, how significant that is, but honestly, the National AAU Tournament is a big-time deal. And here are a little ragtag bunch of kids from Beckman, West Virginia, not all stars from anywhere, were in the quarterfinals of the National AAU Tournament. He went on to say this. He, he said, and let me remember, try to remember this exactly. But he said, he, he said, uh, in your remaining two years as governor, first of all, he said, I, again, I salute you for, no, 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 let me go back. The next paragraph said this, while I was in Army Ranger School, I said to myself over and over, keep sawing wood. He was an Army Ranger. He was a West Point graduate. Absolutely, his family should have probably didn't have a whole lot, but literally, he went on and worked. He said, on every military deployment, every day, I told myself to keep sawing the wood. And then he ended by saying this. He said, he said, Governor, in your remaining two years as governor, I tell you to keep sawing the wood. Now, I'm telling you. And then he said, if you want to connect, I currently live in Germany. American hero, it's all there is to it. I would tell you, keep sawing the wood. You have done more good than you'll ever know, but there's so much more that you can do. God bless all of you. Thank you for having me.